Welcome to the Sleon Productions podcast. Today's guest, we have Ben Sens. Um, he's a owner and operator of Boss Construction Group. I've known Ben since uh, since we were in fourth grade. Ben, welcome to the Sleon Productions podcast. Thank you. Podcast. Thanks for having me, Santiago. So, Ben, obviously, we you know we recently connected. You've yeah. become one of my clients, and can you tell us a, a little bit? of yourself and what you've been doing uh, lately. So basically my business is I market with realtors and uh, property owners in the real estate community and I close open permits and code violations. So I work a lot doing what I used to do with the city um, as a building uh, clerk and, and code officer and uh, I'm, I'm kind of morphed as an owner's rep in, into real estate and uh, the reason why like we got connected is because I started marking myself to realtors in the real estate community, and I found a lot of them were on you know Facebook and social media. So, so that's exactly where where we came back into play. We met only 120 days ago in uh, December, and yeah. and I'm I'm all over the place. I mean from my I mean I was I wasn't doing much video, and the video that I was doing was more do it yourself. Yeah, and obviously uh, for Slam Productions, we've been doing a lot more video and a lot of more um, media, and, we, and and we've been feeding it through the Facebook, through the Instagram, yeah, yeah. and also through the, the like the LinkedIn and all, almost all platforms, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, how I started was the same thing. I mean, I started doing more video, and you see the um, like the whole marketing experience more, and, and you'd be seeing more results. Yeah. How has video changed your company? Uh, if you're not doing video, you're not doing business. Um, it's very important for my company, uh, being that the people that I'm marketing to, who I need to get out there, the messages that I need to convey. Again, I see, and uh, you always told me that content is king, especially relevant content. Um, you see people, you know, talk about, hey, I want to talk about the, uh, this guy told me yesterday, the five F's, food and fun and fitness on social media. But how did, the nice thing is that when I speak about my business, it, it, it captures the audience, meaning I, 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 I engage the community. I show what are the problems in the community, what, are, what, what, what's, what problems are people having, and what solutions can our company give them. So that's mainly what I've, what I've been focusing on. Now, I've known you for years, and I, you know, learning, you know, being with you like these past couple of months, I've realized you go way back with real estate. Can you tell us like the beginnings, with your grandpa involved, things like that? Sure. So um, a third third generation family in real estate. My grandfather was a developer in Miami Beach. Uh, he built high rise buildings. Um, my father, um, his son is a business owner in North Dade. Uh, I, pr I pretty much ha learned how to sell from my parents. Um, and, and watching my family and how to interact with the community. My dad's a local business owner. He owns a pet store, animal clinic, uh, pet parade in Miami Gardens. And um, I always I always dealt with working with the community. Um, so uh, I really enjoyed local government and governance when I when I was uh, when I was at USF. Uh, studying my undergraduate program. So I, I, I got into city planning after that. I, I said I want to develop a career in local government maybe or I want to develop how I can engage you know, residents and citizens. So I found my way into urban planning. Um, I studied that and I um, really quickly I was getting hired by cities to do permitting and code enforcement. So it's a lot of interacting with the public and it's a lot of permitting and uh, code compliance issues. You know, uh, the goal of the city is voluntary compliance. So they say 100% of people, they like firefighters, 50% like police, nobody likes the city. So like these city licenses you see on the wall and things like that, again, the city's trying to get you to build properly, to uh, pay local business tax receipts, to, to, to do certain things. So I was engaged with the public helping them on that. And then I got into real estate and then shifted and got my general contractor license and then said, hey, I don't need to work, you know, on just the side of the city and helping people with permitting and code violations. I could help business owners, property owners in the community doing it. So that's when a bunch of my family members who are realtors kept asking me. They said, Ben, we have these issues holding up our closing. So then 
what I naturally would do to, you know, with them is, is I'd go to the city, I'd find out what needs to be corrected. I'm a general contractor. I, I can qualify the projects and, and get those permits closed out. So that, and, and then through, through your company, I started educating agents, which was really cool. I mean, that was like next level. I mean, for, for me, I mean, I, I could be in, uh, I've done about 18, 20 presentations in uh, real estate offices throughout South Florida. But again, that I was just standing in one office, um, you know, serving lunch, talking to 30, 40, 50 agents. But now I'm engaging people on social media. So uh, I, I, I'm able to capture um, a larger audience. Um, I'm an owner operator. Uh, so doing my business and handling the business development, the video has been, you know, essential. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a, a educating experience. I mean, ever since being with you, I've been, been more, more involved with like the real estate world, you know, yeah. because us, you know, let's be honest here in Florida, you know, real estate is our, it's one like, like the biggest industries here in Florida. Yeah. It's them. Uh, hospitality and of course medical or health um, what have you learned that you didn't know before you got into this business like with like, like the whole real estate industry um, well in South Florida in general we have a lot of people coming here you know a safe haven from other countries and we've seen that in waves growing up in Weston yeah. I just moved from Aventura to Boca um, and, and again, as I deal with the real estate community, I see some, you know, some of the things with our business climate, um, meaning um, the people who are relocating here from other countries, um, they're uh, the melting pot of that going into our South Florida community. Um, I, our, our environment's very transient here, so a lot of times my business uh, fixes open permits and code violations. These are people who you know, weren't able to work with their contractor or their contractor didn't perform the way that they should. So I'm learning, what's really cool is I'm learning how to deal with so many people on so many different levels. Um, and, and it gets very personal because again, this is, you know, a, when someone purchases a property, it's the biggest purchase that they're ever going to make. Um, you know, when they have to sell the property and deal with these issues, it's a hardship. So again, um, I've learned a lot how to develop solutions, um, identify leaders in the community and organizations um, within my industry. So we're heavily involved in Women's Council of Realtors in Broward County. We're heavily involved in the Miami Day, uh, in the in the Miami Board of Realtors, the Greater Fort Lauderdale Board of Realtors. So I'm seeing a lot. Uh, and again, the real estate community is very wild. I'm 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 seeing the the main organizations who service these communities who bring resources to agents and, uh, you know, as we know in real estate, it's, it's literally, you know, the top five, 10% of people doing 90% of the business. And I, I always was told that, but I, I you know, th there's very few people doing it part time. Um, and there's very few people, there's, there's very few people wanting to genuinely, you know, do real estate and, perform the service of real estate and help others, you know, most people think it's a quick, quick business, but all businesses are founded on relationships and relationships take time to build. So when people complain, there's no loyalty in the business, I said, well, maybe you didn't, you know, make the relationships that you need to. What's the most common situation for a realtor when they call you? What's like, okay, just name a, you know, a uh, day in the life when a realtor will call you and Hey, yeah, it's it, 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 it's hectic. Yeah, it's hectic because of what we just spoke about. Right. Um, realtors are generally doing five to ten deals a year, you mm -hmm. know, and and maybe that's on average. So what we see in the South Florida community, what I've seen amongst the realtors here is is you know agents again. It's a commission based. Uh, it's a, it's a commission based occupation. Um, there's very little cash flow in the business. So when realtors call me, their commission is on the line. Um, they've been thrown a problem from the title company or the real estate attorney through a lien search. What a lien search is, is it talks about, you know, municipal liens, water, things that are owed to the city prior to closing. A small component of that is, which is really important, is open permits and code violations. So that's why I'm always, uh, throughout my, my travels and my presentations um, and, and interactions with agents, I'm always teaching them with 
uh, not to have to call me in a frantic state. So you're calling me because your deal is falling apart. And your family needs that commission to live, you know. So, I, so again, a lot of agents who don't have cash flow, they're calling me in frantic. They're calling me in stress, stressful situations. Not only are they stressful, their sellers stressful because they have to work on, you know, remedying these things usually before they are able to convey the transaction. What's the most common? What is a open permit? What is a um, code violation? An, an, an open permit is basically. Um, well, we could start out with an open permit. An open permit is when um, someone, a resident or business owner has hired a contractor or went and pulled a permit for a specific type of work in their local municipality and they did not close that permit. Permits are only good for 180 days from issuance and then usually 90 days from the last inspection. So an open permit uh, is like... Uh, it's when someone put their name on a job, but they didn't finish the job and the job didn't get inspected. So we're general contractors and the state says that if you're going to pull a permit for something, generally they want, you know, the public health, safety and welfare protected and they want someone to take responsibility and ownership over that work. So again, you're dealing with property, you're dealing with trans property transfers ownership. So again, it's it, 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 the permits and regulations, while they might be very overbearing, right. um, it's public safety. And also, like we were talking about this before, that each city has their own codes and permits. How much of a dilemma do you see that between cities? Is that um, Well, there's no consistency in the process. So right. every solution I deal with is uh, is customized to that property and the building department that I'm working with. and. You even have to lean searches check these uh, these uh, lean search companies. You know, even in Weston, Weston was incorporated in '96. Uh, the building department opened in 2004. Between '96 and 2004, if you have a home built in '92, for those 10 years, Broward County was the building department. So again, it's uh, inter. You know. Um, something that was stressed to me when I was studying urban planning and, and working for the cities is there's very little intergovernmental coordination. How cities are talking to each other, how county and city interact, regional governance. And, and, and that's, that's what I studied. Um, process, regional governance, I studied those things in graduate school at FAU. That's something that's really, really huge because people, you know, uh, don't really think about that. You know, some people think a, a realtor would just close out the house and like that, but no, they could run into issues. Um, they can run into issues and potentially when they're put in a stressful situation because of the nature of the business, realtors like salespeople tend to tell people what they want to hear. Right. So, so, so again, and, and, and that not only can get the realtor in trouble and ruin the relationship with their client, the buyer, or the seller in the long term, uh, when they have a problem three years down the road, uh, it, you know, it, it could also put their office in jeopardy. And, you know, we, we want to try and eliminate those things. Meaning I don't want agents to deal with code compliance issues. Um, I do not want to, uh, as a general contractor, who does what I do, um, I don't want to generate social media content. I want to hire someone who does that right. and someone who's knowledgeable on how to engage the audience like S. Leon Productions. So, you know, I, I just want to stick to what I know. Like this morning in Hollywood, um, I had to open up an electrical panel uh, for for the electrical inspector. And, and again, I, I, you know, I used video to capture a lot of the things he was saying because I'm not an electrician. The electrician wasn't present. It's an open permit. And I want to be able to convey through audio and video like what we're doing, convey instead of piecemeal or on telephone and then the message gets lost. So video is video is very important, whether it's documenting things for my business, uh, promoting and the development of my business and engagement. What's the best part of your job? Um, the best part of my job, and, and, and again, um, you know, everyone has something that drives them, every business. Um, you know, some are negative, some are positive. Uh, some people, you know, get a high off, uh, 
you know, pulling that slot machine or, or after they exercise, they release a lot of endorphins. Um, something very similar with me, um, when I'm able to close an open permit and help somebody, um, you know, sometimes it's frustrating along the way, but when I'm able to help someone who's in a situation, find a solution and, and, and that's my job, you know, so it's, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's, it's very fulfilling. At times, I mean, it's frustrating when you don't have clients or property owners who want to cooperate. But again, you know, nobody could take those things personally. When people are in a hardship situation, they behave certain ways. Like, for example, if you're moving from your house, uh, you're going to be very stressful during that move. So when I, you know, when I talk to you, you know, or I talk to anyone moving, you know, they're in a transition point in their life. So when I'm able to help someone in a transition point of their life and, and, and help, help improve, you know, the process that they have to go through, uh, that's what I enjoy doing. Can you tell us uh, the name behind Boss? How did you come up with it? So the name behind Boss was from my brother-in-law, Matt Feldman. He's a insurance defense lawyer in uh, South Miami. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ben, Olivia, Sari, and Sammy. Uh, my first daughter's name is Olivia. Uh, my wife's name is Sari. And uh, my dog's name was Sammy. And now I have another daughter now. She's not included in there. But uh, Harley's not included in there. But it's Ben, Olivia, Sari, and Sammy. And uh, it was really good because, you know, I, I like boss and I like construction um, and uh, it's very catchy. And a, a, a lot of people, you know, uh, assume that I'm a builder or a general contractor, um, which I am a general contractor. But a lot of times, you know, I, I'm not doing building or commercial or residential build outs or the construction of buildings, I'm helping people with these issues. I'm cleaning up after other people who have left property owners in hardship situations. Can you tell us your experience about reading building codes? I mean, people think it's a boring thing, but what's what's your take on building codes? Um, well, building codes are constantly changing, okay. and uh, compliance needs to be met. So, again, uh, when I was studying for my general contractor license, and I had uh, 13 or 14 books, I had an OSHA book, I had a Walker's uh, estimating book. I had a contractor's manual, which was put together by the state that compromised five books. And then you have the Florida Building Code, you know. Um, when we're working with the Florida, when we're working with the Building Code, we're generating standards, especially to protect the public safety, number one. Number two, um, which is really important where the building code comes involved is uh, ADA compliance, which is the American Disabilities Act, um, protecting, uh, you know, um, protecting residents and business owners who are going to come into a public assembly. Like we're in a public assembly right now, we're in a commercial office building. Um, so uh, all those things are very important, but uh, w the, the, the one thing is never commit anything to memory. Uh, when you have, like you even see, um, you know, you even see your physicians and your doctors who have had residency in many situations or building officials with many trades under them. We're generalists and we have these books for reference. Um, I, I don't like committing any of the things to memory, but it was really important to know where to find the things. And that's what the state tested you on. They didn't test you on the knowledge of the memorization of 13 books. I'm not a, like a rain man or anything, <laughs> but they tested you on how to know where to find certain occupancy codes, uh, like to classify an occupancy or the certain means of egress for a door, um, you know, to meet ADA compliance. So it's, it, it was, it was, it was harder than my master's degree. It was like really tough. I mean, it was, uh, um, and, and everyone has their own style of learning, right? So, uh, um, I, 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 of, most of my style of learning, um, and I preach agents to be proactive and, 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 you know, be ahead of the game. Most of my style of learning has been reactive, meaning, is I, meaning I take the test, I fail it, and then I learn through there. And then, you know, I end up seeing what I missed or seeing what type of questions that they're asking on a test. So, uh, but either way, you're doing it. You're either, you know, putting the 200 hours of elbow grease in before you get the license or you're learning how to take the test while you're failing it. What would you tell a kid that wants to go to city planning or become a general contractor? What advice would you tell them right now? Um, a kid that's 18 year old going to college. Um, I would, uh, I would definitely tell them to learn, you know, to, to learn a trade, uh, 
to get um, an internship uh, to find out what they want to do before they actually go ahead and, and pursue to study it. Uh, one of my old professors, David Prosperi, uh, he, he, he just passed a couple years ago, may he rest in peace, and uh, uh, he, he told me, and I'm 33 now, and, and he told me, and I was in grad school, I was 24, he says, come back to grad school when you're 30. Uh, it, things will make more sense to you. Um, so again, he's a theorist. He wasn't a practitioner in urban planning or land use or public administration, but he was, he, you know, and, and, and I think about that all the time and I'm like, well, maybe it would have been harder to get a master's degree now with family and kids and having, you know, all of life's constraints. But uh, I look at learning a lot differently now. I look at learning a lot differently because I have things to apply it to. And I think, like, it's like I wasn't good in algebra, but I really like geometry because I understood how the algebra was relating to the shapes, right. the, 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 the geometric shape. So for me, I'm very hands-on. And if something, like, like I'm not an online learner. If, if I go to a school and they say, oh, take classes online, I'm an in-classroom learner. <laughs> Um, it, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, everyone has their own l uh, learning capabilities. Some people are visual, some people are audio, um, some people are kinetic learners. You know, I'm, I'm more of a kinetic learner from doing. What is your favorite quote? Um, my fa one of my favorite quotes is from my great grandmother. Um, and, and, and she used to have it on the wall, um, in, in her house. And it says, I had no shoes and I complained until I met a man who had no feet. So I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, um, I like a glass is half, half full quote, you right. know, um, being that, uh, you know, uh, my wife tells me, you know, a lot to try and be understanding of other people, uh, meaning if you find someone in a hardship situation, um, figure out and accept why they're in a hardship situation and try and help them. Um, don't just say, hey, they're, they're a mean person. Um, so, so try and you know, try and do your best to understand people. And I think that relates back to that quote in, in, in my interpretation. You know, I know some of these things are, you know, can go many different ways, but, but, but again, un, un, you know, understand someone else's walk of life. If you can. Who's been the most influential person in your life? Um, most influential person. I, I have, I have two people. Um, I have my father, uh, Clifford. He owns a pet parade animal clinic over in Miami Gardens. And uh, my father-in-law has also been very influential in my life. Um, you know, uh, both, both have told me, you know, to find uh, a, a way in the community that you can connect with people and uh, a service that you can offer. And that's what we've done in Boss Construction Group. I mean, we've identified, uh, you know, a niche area where there's a service that's needed. Um, and, uh, and, and, and just, 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 just be reliable and diligent and honest about what you do and build, build relationships. And, uh, both of those people have actually preached that to me. Um, and also never to close, close doors. Um, meaning that, you know, uh, I would have never, ever thought that some of the people that I worked with in the city that I would have ever seen them or worked with them. That was 10 years ago. Well, now I'm still working with them, but I'm not with the city. <laughs> I'm helping, uh, you know, you know, there's only one city. Yeah. There's only a couple city employees. So, again, you know, make good relationships with people. Keep good relationships with people. Uh, treat everyone the same, you know. Um, you know, treat, you know, uh, look, I mean, um, you know, just, just, just treat everyone the same. Even, even the gas station attendant or the guy who's installing a, a water heater. Um, and and I, I I've learned uh, I've learned that that is the key to success. You know that that's the key to you know business. Ready for some random questions? Uh, okay. Has the teacher ever changed your life? And if so, how? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a uh, teacher has changed my life. I remember I was going. Uh, we were in the portable side into Cuesta Middle, um, and uh, I, I forgot. I sincerely forgot the name of the teacher. Um, but I said something really mean to a girl and, uh, and it, it really changed my life. And, and I said, and, and, and we were arguing about something and then we were arguing about something and I didn't really, I don't think cared for the teacher. 
uh, at the time and the, or that day. And then uh, I told the girl, uh, I think her name was Miss Osborne or whatever the teacher. I said, Miss Osborne hates you. And then, you know, she went over to the teacher and she said, Ben said, you hate me. And uh, it was just a, it, it was just like, a you know, never speak for somebody else, uh, especially if it's conveying those messages. Um, you know, again, you never know with what you saw. You know, of course, I was probably aggravated in that situation and I was a 12 year old boy. But again, um, you know, just just try and be as transparent as, as, as possible and understanding. What would you tell your 15 year old self? I would tell my 15 year old self, uh, wait, you know, wait to see yourself in 15 or 20 years. Um, like how to, you know, identify patients and how, and how to, how to deal with things. Um, you know, don't, don't be very quick to talk, you know, um, and, and try and listen to others. Yeah, man. Sometimes, you know, we, you know, we always think about that, that question and it's a, it's an interesting question because 15 is like an interesting age, but then again, when you turn eighteen, it's like another. Uh, well, no, age it's, as well. It, it's 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 very interesting because you know uh, a lot of the office managers and business owners and a lot of my uh, my my mentors and people that I interact with, uh, they're double my age. Yeah. So uh, again, I'm thirty three, going to be thirty four, and uh, these people are sixty five, seventy years old, you know, and. Um, They've not only have they been on this earth twice the amount of mine. They've had young kids. They have old kids. They have grandkids. They've been in so many businesses and re relationships, whether it's business, family, whatever. So um, you could name a problem, and, and and they've they've dealt with it before. They've 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 found the solution. They've they've helped it out. You know, that's a very good, uh, interesting situation. Yeah, it's true. We're almost in. Uh, Almost, uh, pretty much almost at the end of the show, how can people reach you? Um, people can reach me by uh, going on Facebook. Um, I, what I like to do is I like to use my Facebook page. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn, thanks to your company who has me all over the place. Um, you know, uh, you, can, you can private message me. You can call me on my cell phone. Um, my uh, cell phone is 954-648-9883. Um, my Facebook page is Boss Construction Group, Open Permits and Code Violation Solutions, um, and uh, those are those are the best ways to reach me. Um, I love to do education with other uh, leaders in the business community, especially with real estate. Um, I love to uh, you know just 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 sit down, have some coffee, and and get to know people like we're doing right now, Santiago. Ben, any closing words? Today's a great day, and just make it make it a great day. Um, do do everything that you can too. And uh, again, Santiago, I'm really appreciative and thankful for for doing this podcast with you today. And uh, I look forward to interacting more in the future and doing more collaborative things with you. Ben, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. As you know, coming from all the way from middle school, you know, like there's only a few people that. You know that could tag you along as friends. Sure. And, until like, until like they're on there. this hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Some people you'll never see again. Yeah. You know, since high school, middle school. But some I, people you'll also like. I mean, I've ran into a bunch of people. You know, connecting in in, in the community. Um, like I told you, I ran into Alex Sika with Carl Shores, and I ran into a couple other like BJ yeah. and just <laughs> a lot of people. You know, at a different point in your life, you may reconnect with those people. So it's pretty cool. Ben, I appreciate you coming on to the Sleon Productions podcast. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Santiago.